<laughs> It'll take a second for it to flow. Are you going to welcome or you want me to? I can do it and then you do it too if you want to. You can do it. Hello, hello. We are live on Facebook. I need to expand my screen so I can see everyone. All right, we're here live to do um, some question and answers from financial, um, for, for finances. Sorry, can't talk. Um, I'm Heather. I'm with First Pioneers. We also have Lawoka here. She is our CEO and she is going to answer all y'all's questions today. So um, I'm going to give it just one second and let some people jump on and see if anybody is, uh, is going to jump on <laughs> and watch today. Um, we've got several questions to answer. Absolutely. If you have any questions, though, type them into the comment area and we're going to uh, answer those as well. We had a few questions come in prior to uh, our live event. And we have so we have those ready to answer while you're typing in your questions. OK, well, if you guys are ready, I think we can get started. Um, and one of the biggest <clears throat> questions we get, I know, in the credit union, and I've heard so many people ask me this is, What's the difference in a bank and a credit union? So for me, um, there are there are a few differences, but you know we are very similar. We both provide financial services. However, um, the difference between a credit union and a bank is that each member owns one share of the credit union, where in a bank they have stockholders, and the stockholders might own. A thousand or two thousand or a million shares of the bank and they are the ones that are in charge of making the decision they have a larger amount of votes in the decision making for a bank whereas our members are the ones that make our decisions here through our annual membership meeting awesome um okay so let's see another question we had was um, what are our fees for our different accounts and things? Well, that's a hard question because I'm not specific. I'm not sure what specific fees you're asking for. So we're going to go ahead and um, defer that to our website. And if you look on um, www.firstpioneers.com uh, under online services, you'll see a fee schedule and you can find all the fees there. Um, one of one of the most popular questions is what's your checking account fees? Are your checking accounts free? Um, our checking accounts are structured where you can make them free. So, and we do have more than one type of checking account. We have um, our economy checking, which is um, all electronic and that is free. Uh, if you sign up for e-statements as well, then there is no uh, no fee at all for that checking account. Now, if you do write a check, there's 50 cents per check that clears your account. And also if you elect to get paper statements every month, then there's a $2 fee on that. However, um, you can make that free. If you prefer to write checks, we do have a basic checking account that is $7 a month. However, if you do $750 worth of debit card purchases or you have ACH drafts coming out of your account, that'll make that account free as well. Um, and we do have an interest bearing account. That one is uh, if you have if you keep a high dollar balance in your account and that one earns interest on uh, that checking account. And then we have a second chance checking account, which we call Fresh Start. And so that's if you've had problems with checking accounts in the past at other institutions or even at our institution, we have, um, we, we do offer it. And it's, uh, that one, however, is $15 a month. And we want you to prove that you're going to um, use your account wisely. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, so you had said um, 
the website I will put in the comments after this, I'll put the links for that stuff for the fee schedule. And also um, on the site, you can find those different kind of accounts. So you can review back over that and figure out which one will fit your needs the best. So we can absolutely, we'll put that link on there um, for you guys to find it. Um, so the next thing that we had questions about was about loans. Um, how do you qualify for a loan? And how do you know if you need a co-signer for a loan? Okay, well, we look at several factors, but I'm going to highlight the, the three most important factors. Um, and this is, of course, um, is not all inclusive. So there are going to be other items. Don't think that just because these three items uh, I'm mentioning are the only items we look at. But the first thing is, of course, your credit score. Here at the credit union, we lend to um, anyone that has a credit score of 575 or above. However, if you do have a credit score below 575, we still will review your um, application and may make an exception and lend to you as well. The next thing is we look at your debt to income ratio. So how much do you owe per month, not your total debt, but how much uh, do you owe per month compared to how much uh, income or salary you make per month? And we always try and keep that ratio below 50 base, uh, 50 percent. And so if you um, say you have a credit card that has a three thousand dollar balance on it, um, we're not going to look at the three thousand dollar balance. What we're going to look at is your minimum monthly payment of probably that's going to be about thirty five dollars. So we'll look at that compared to how much you um, how much income you make. And then also the next thing we look at is, do you have any negative marks on your credit score, such as uh, judgments or collections? And one of the things we do overlook um, some of the medical collections. So if you've had a, you know, a car accident and you had to go to the emergency room and you have this huge outstanding bill with the hospital, we're going to take that into consideration. We're not going to, um, Hold that against you. So, um, and so, how do you know if you need a cosigner? If your credit's not so great and you want a better rate, um, we we ask that you get a cosigner, and that way um, you can go. You can use the rate that the cosigner qualifies for. Is that something that um, maybe a young person starting out, just buying maybe a new car or something, they if they don't have credit built yet? Um, they may have to look at a cosigner. Yes, if they don't have credit built yet, um, they probably will need a cosigner, a parent or a sibling. Um, but here at the credit union, we do have uh, credit builder loans. And we, we do recommend once you turn 18, because we can't make a loan to you until you turn 18. But once you turn 18, come and uh, start the credit builder program. It does take about two years to uh, finish it. But once you get through that program, you should be at least a, a better than a 650 score. And so how that works is you'll come in and we'll do a $250 loan for six months. And if you pay that back over six months on time, uh, we will make you another loan for $500 for six months. And you pay that one back on time. And then we'll do a $1,000 loan for one year. And then pay that back. And at that point, your credit is built and you should have a good credit score um, ready to take on the world. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great way to get started. Um, okay, this is a question that's come up several times I've seen. Um, do you have to take a class as a first time home buyer? That's what I can, I've heard that you do. <laughs> you do not have to take a class as a first time home buyer. Um, but we do here have uh, financial home buyer classes just so you kind of know what to expect when you're going to buy a home or um, what paperwork you're going to need. So no, you do not have to take a class, but it is recommended if you can find one, it gives good information um, on what to expect. Okay, um, okay so we're still on, on credit here. So let's right. say you're going to buy a home or a car um, how important is it to pre-qualify? Because I know when you go buy a car, a lot of times that, that car dealer will want to run your credit, you know, while you're there, because of course they want the loans. <laughs> right. Um, 
it's so way back in the day, you used to get pre-qualified for everything before you would go and buy anything. Now, um, our process is so quick, you don't have to pre-qualify for a car, a car loan. It is recommended if you don't quite know what kind of car you want, um, just to know, hey, I can't buy a $80,000 car, I can only buy a $30,000 car. You, you know, that if you don't have any idea of how much you can buy in a car, then I would probably get pre-qualified. Um, that's always good to know because we have a lot of people that get disappointed when we say, uh, you can't buy that $70,000 car, dollar car. You might want to try a $20,000 car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as far as for home, first time home buyers or even just anybody buying a home, it's recommended. I know your realtor and the, the seller, if you're buying a home, likes to know that you've already started the process. Um, and they may accept your offer over another offer of a person that hasn't been pre-qualified yet. Okay, um, great, that's, that's great to know. Um, so it's good to find out what you can and can't do before you go out shopping. That's right. Um, okay, so I know a lot of people um, want to open checking accounts in particular for, for their minor children. I mean, in a savings account, you can, you can go ahead and do that. But when, when they're starting to get ready to have a checking account, can we talk about the, the age that they need to be and, and what do you bring as far as maybe some kind of identification or something for, for children? Okay, so I know that everyone has opened an account for their children uh, as soon as they're born. As soon as they get their social security card, they've opened a savings account for them and that's going well. The next item uh, that they wanna add is a checking account. Now, here at our credit union, which is not a federal regulation, but we, also, we have an internal policy of 15 uh, years of age. We won't open an account um, a checking account younger than that. We want to make sure that they're, um, you know, old enough to understand what a checking account means and offer them a debit card. Um, okay. What items you need to bring, of course, if you don't have an account already, you will need um, your social security card and then you will need an ID, a federal, a government issued ID. And if you are a student, uh, your student ID is issued by the school, which is a government agency. So that's fine. Okay, so for kids who don't have a license yet, they could bring their, their school ID. ID. We okay. accept that. And then once they turn 16 or once they get their driver's license, then we we uh, request that they bring their driver's license in at that time. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see. Um, well, I guess when we're talking about accounts, um, there, there were some questions about what other what other account options, savings account, I'm sorry, options are there um, rather than, than just, you know, the regular savings account. I think a lot of people have, have that account, but are there other savings accounts um, that maybe are, are helpful or maybe have higher interest rates or something? Absolutely. Um, you know, everybody's uh, saving a little bit more today because you're, you know, they're uncertain of what the future is going to hold. So everybody's putting money in savings and trying to get the most interest that they can get on there. Uh, their dollars that they're saving. Um, we do have different types of uh, savings accounts. Of course, we have our regular savings and then we have our um, Christmas club and our, we have a special savings. Some people use that for a vacation club. Um, those all earn the same rate, but if you wanna earn a little more, but still not tie up your money, where um, long-term we have a money market um, that, you can withdraw from the account uh, two times a month, and um, that earns a little bit, a little bit more than a regular savings account. And then we also have our CDs, which are um, the terms are six months, uh, one year, two years, three years, four years, and five years. And of course, the longer you go, the longer you tie up your money, the higher the interest rate, rate is going to be on that. And then, of course, we do have IRAs, which are um, individual retirement accounts. And those are, you put those away until you're 59 and a half years of age. And those um, also earn higher interest rates than regular savings accounts. 
So I guess you can do that if your company doesn't offer you some sort of retirement fund um, at your job. I guess that would be a good way to Absolutely. To and own. we do have both of the IRA types. So we can do a pre-tax IRA or an after-tax IRA. And um, so you can decide which type you want and we will, um, we'll open that for you. That's awesome. Okay. Um, okay. Big question we get a lot is what are some options for paying your bills online? I know a lot of people don't do, you know, they don't do checks anymore. Or they're trying to, you know, make sure their calendar straight and they get those bills paid on time. So um, I know there's several options for paying online. Um, so some people have some questions about that. Well, let me just go over all the payment options. And that <laughs> way, um, one of them may fit you, even if it's not online. We, you know, of course, we have the standard, you can mail it in, you can come in in person. Those are the, the original ways. Um, whenever you set up your loan, you can set up an ACH, which is um, where it'll draft from your account. Uh, if you have a checking account at another institution, you can draft from that account and send it here. Um, then we have the um, automatic transfer, which if you have a savings account here and you want to automatically transfer it to the loan or a checking account here, you can automatically transfer it to the loan. We also have um, the ability to um, go online under transfers and do an ACH in transfer. And what that is, is uh, you will pull, you will direct the, the time or the date that you wanted to pull. And it will pull that money from your other institution and send the money to your loan here. Um, that does take an overnight process. So ACHs are not instant. Um, and then the last payment option we have is you can call in and uh, use your debit card and pay your loan through the debit card. Now there's a fee on that one of $7.95 to use that option. So if you wanna avoid the $7.95, just go online and do an ACH transfer. Just remember it takes a day. Yeah, make sure to do that early, huh? Yes. Um, okay, let's see. I think we wanna talk about online banking a little bit. Um, do we have a question on the, on the, let's see, we had a question come up in the comments. Let's see. Um, does the Lafayette branch have a cash deposit ATM? Well, our, both of our ATMs in uh, our branches, we, we have four ATMs, uh, one in the heart hospital and one in stellar settings. Those are um, cash, cash withdrawal only, but our ATM here in Lafayette and our ATM in New Iberia do take deposits. Um, they do take deposits. You will need to put it in an envelope to put it into the ATM machine. But yes, we do take cash deposits. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I think let's talk about online banking a little bit. Um, a lot of people have, they, they know that we have Zelle now, which is fabulous. Um, and they've asked a little bit about how, how does one set up um, to be able to use Zelle, because I think there's a few steps to that, if I, if I remember correctly. Absolutely. So I have our trusty Zelle expert here. I'm going to answer the questions, but just in case there's some <laughs> areas that uh, are a little tricky, I'll get her to help me. Um, once you sign up on online banking, you will go into bill pay and then uh, sign up for Zelle that way. So you will have to have um, online banking. You do have to have a checking account um, and sign up for bill pay, which is free, and then uh, sign up for Zelle. Okay. Um, let's see. So when you, if I remember right, you sign up for bill pay, there's going to be a thing where you have to accept the terms and conditions. Yes. yes. And then it'll, it'll process through. Um, and I, I've been using Zell myself. So I just wanted to bring up, you can do it through online banking. Um, you can also do that through our app. So if you have the app um, on your phone, it's very handy for, um, for things like that, um, as well as things like checking your balance and, um, and things like that, which speaking of that, I guess, let's go there. Um, how do you, um, how, how can you get your balance? Because I know calling in is not we don't, you know, that's not something that's right. We, we, we no longer give account balances over the phone. 
um, we were just getting too bombarded with uh, that call every day. So what we have now is we have, um, well, we've always had the, an 800 number. Um, it's 1-800-403-6803. And you can uh, check your account balance over the phone. You can always go online to your account uh, through online banking. And also you can check your balance through our mobile app. And that app, um, I guess most people would know this, but I'm just going to say it. Um, it is on the Apple Store and on Google Play. So, you know, you Absolutely. can go to either one. Just look for First Pioneers and uh, in our logo, you'll find our logo. Right. Um, hang on, we're, we're oh. answering someone. So we have someone kind of giving us hints here. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you do call into the um, 800 number, to check we call it audio response when you check that it's going to ask for your account number you enter your account number then it's going to ask for your pin the pin is not your debit card pin it is the last four of your social security number so just make sure <laughs> um, a lot of people are saying my pin's not working it's, it's the last four of your social security number okay good to know um okay we had another we had a kind of a follow-up question on um on facebook on the website it says there's no charge for atm if withdrawing from any Capital One, is that correct? And if not, can we please explain? Um, so I don't know if that, is that currently on it? That should not currently be on our website. <laughs> <laughs> we did um, have a contract with Capital One years ago where any of our members could use the ATM uh, free of charge. However, Capital One has decided to get out of the credit union business and um, no longer uh, honors that contract. So is, is there a fee? How do you know if you can go to an ATM with your, with your card? It, it's on the back of the card, right? We have networks on the back of our card, but it doesn't have every individual place. What you can do is uh, go into our website and look at the ATM selector and it will tell you the locations of the ATM. We, um, we, do, we have partnered with several credit unions here in town uh, and you can withdraw, you cannot deposit, but you can withdraw from their ATM. We are a part of another network called CU24, which is nationwide and you can deposit through those ATMs and you can find that on our website as well. And Heather's going to put the link up in the comments for both yes. the CU24 network and the um, ATM Select. Okay, um, let's see where we are. Um, so we talked about audio or getting your balance. Um, big question a lot is how do you reset your password for your <laughs> online banking? Um, by yourself without having to um, to call or contact someone. So. Okay, so I do know this answer, but I am going to let Angie answer this. So <laughs> hold on just a second. I'm just going to turn the computer over to her. Okay, so to do your, um, to, to reset your password yourself through online banking, you can choose forgot password. However, it will get send a temporary password to your email. So in order to get that, you need to make sure that your email is correct on file with us. Um, it does take a little while to get the email, um, but you should get a temporary password through your email. And does that temp temporary password expire? At it any does time? expire. I think it only lasts maybe one or two hours and then you need to reset it. If you have any problems, you can give us a call and we can give you a temporary password over the phone. Okay, but if it's a if it's a time when maybe you can't get to us or or call or something, you can you can shoot yeah, just do forgot password. So I guess one of the important things there to remember is um, whatever your information is that you have with your financial institution, make sure it's up to date. <laughs> yeah, your email address would need to be up to date and correct, and yeah. phone numbers also. <laughs> yeah, that way if. Um, and you can change all of that in your online banking. You can change your email address and your phone numbers yourself. Oh, that's awesome. That's great to know. And your address too. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's all the questions that we had. Um, that people had to, you know, ask us about. Um, I don't see any more in the chat. Um, I guess we can give it a 
just a second if anybody's typing um <laughs> but always know that you know we're here we're we're always available if um if you have questions or you you have concerns about your finances um you know that that's the thing we love to do is help people so you know make sure you you contact us you can you can come by you can email you can call and we're happy to try to point you in the right direction for whatever it is that you need and of course the lovely thing that we're, we've been celebrating all week is not only can you visit us in Lafayette but you can also visit us in New Iberia now. So, so I have one more thing to add before okay. we sign off um, you know there's so many scams going around and I just want to reiterate that we it, we will never ask you for your online banking user ID or password. We will never ask you for any of your personal information. We have that all on file. Um, if we call you, we may want to identify. We'll only ask you for your last for your social, um, but we will not ask you for any of your online banking information to look at the account with you because we have it in front of us already. We've had a lot of people that have gotten scammed and have given their uh, online banking and password and unfortunately has um, a lot of money has been taken out of their account. So we're trying to work with them and trying to educate everybody about the safety of their account. Do not give it out. If someone wants to deposit a check for you, through online banking, do not <laughs> give out your online banking. Just have them send the check to you and you can deposit it yourself. Yeah, if it sounds too good to be true, probably is. Absolutely. So very good words of wisdom. So yeah, there again, if you need us, if you ever question it, you know, just ask us because we've probably encountered it and we can probably um, let you know um, whether it's something that, that you can trust or not. So um, unfortunately that's, seems to be the world we live in right now, but um, we're here to help you in any way that we can. So um, I think that's it for today. Yes, I just we... wanted to say thanks to everybody, our members. We appreciate that you put your trust in us. Um, we we certainly enjoy banking, uh, doing all your banking for you. Oh, I think we have another question coming in. <laughs> <laughs> we have somebody, little activity over there. But um, wanted to say thank you to all of our members that um, are joining us on Facebook, but also that put their trust in us to handle their financial um, issues. Absolutely, we love it. Um, we do have a quick question. Um, okay. Do I need to call and make an appointment to see about making a loan or is the lobby open? So our lobby is open, um, and if you're going to make a home loan, if you're coming in fresh for a home loan, it's probably best to make an appointment because those take a little bit longer. If you're just doing a regular loan, you can do it online. All of our, um, our loan from start to finish is electronic, so you can go online uh, under online services and yes. loan applications and fill out a loan application and... Uh, to put all your information in, we'll give you a yes or no answer. Um, well, we won't give you a no answer. We'll give you a maybe, and then we'll direct it to a loan officer. And um, once you're processed and good to close, we can send you the documents electronically, and you can sign the documents electronically. We have a lot of people that are out of state that uh, still make loans with us, and the electronic process is very easy for them. Yes, we love online. <laughs> yes, we love online services. <laughs> Okay, well, those were great questions. Um, well, if you guys need anything else from us, feel free to call, email, like I said, come by and see us. We're always here to help whenever you need us, and we're glad you joined us today. And uh, be looking for us. I'm sure we will be doing this again soon. So everybody have a great day. Thanks. Bye, everybody. <laughs>